This week on Maximize Minimal Living, we go across the border, no not to the states, but to Nova Scotia to explore Ski Wentworth. This is the first time we go out of province to ski and we definitely made the most of it, exploring a bunch of the network of beginner trails all over the mountain. And while conditions weren't always great, we definitely found some diamonds in the rough. What's up everyone, welcome back to another video at Coastal Trails Media and today I am so excited because for the first time we're actually going skiing in Nova Scotia. We're hitting up Ski Wentworth which is just inside of the border of Nova Scotia, halfway between Moncton and Turo and we're gonna see what it has to offer. I mean again the season hasn't been great so far, there's not a ton of snow, there's only kind of like half the runs that are open so I think it'll give us a good chance to kind of take in what it is that the mountain has to offer for more of the beginner to intermediate and then it gives us a reason to come back to explore the glades when the conditions are a little better. So we're All right, so as per usual, we started off with kind of the simplest trail in the mountain, and this was called Chickadee. Literally right at the top of the mountain, it said slowest way down, and they were not kidding. There was a lot of pushing, especially at the beginning, a lot of skating, just in order to get somewhere where we could actually fly. What? It is slow. Once we got a little bit along the trail, it definitely did start to pick up a little bit. One thing to notice about this trail though, even though it is for beginners, it is very narrow. And so you can pick up speed and there are some sections that are very steep. So you do have to be a little bit careful as you're going, especially when you're coming around blind corners and you don't exactly know what's coming up. Here you can kind of get a good idea of the gradient. It's not too bad, it's nice and slow. However, right at the bottom of this kind of first big hill, we did find some people that were um, in a little bit of a bad state. And that was definitely something to make note of here on this trail as well. It's narrow and there's a ton of people. Don't get me wrong, it is absolutely beautiful. They're windy, through the woods, fresh coat of snow on everything, but we definitely need to make note. This is clearly one of those trails that's written for beginners and people use it as such. And therefore it can be a little bit of a traffic jam in some sections and so you really do have to just be patient and work your way through nice and slowly. They do actually cordon off some areas when they do get steeper to let people know that they do need to slow down. Like on most mountains, there are junctions where several different trails kind of join up together. And so you always want to be careful as you're kind of moving into those spaces, not to collide or not to be in a position that could be dangerous for anyone. As we got to the bottom, finally, this trail probably took about 10 to 15 minutes just to get down, but we eventually got back to the chair. So we just did the chickadee trail, which was first one on the mountain it says right at the top slowest trail here it was definitely that they weren't exaggerating <laughs> lots of skating lots of pushing my legs are more tired from that than anything else also lots of kids so if you're gonna do that one just make sure you stay in control so you don't run anyone over all right so the next section that's probably important to talk about is this middle section that heads down towards the chair pretty much all of the trails on the right side of the mountain meet up with this main trail that goes down. This is a green trail, pretty straightforward. It is under the chair. There's a lot of open space, however, and so you really can utilize it to the best of your abilities going from one side to the other and work your way down nice and slow. As I mentioned, there are a lot of people, and so this path can get quite a bit icy, but other than that, it should be fine. Next, we decided to take on the Sugar Shack into Sassy. And so this was another green run. The one thing about this mountain is that the chair is actually set pretty far back. And so that makes the first section of pretty much every run quite a nice gradual descent. You can see the absolute landscape from here. And so it does make for a beautiful look as you kind of meander your way through these slower sections. Pretty quick though, it does have some sections that begin to get a little bit steeper and so you do start to pick up speed and you work your way along. It can also get pretty complicated in terms of the signage on this mountain. It is not as straightforward as some of the other mountains that we have gone to and checked out. For example here to the left you go down a blue run or if you take the right path as we did this is 
the actual sissy trail and so that's another green trail that joins up to that main trail that goes all the way down pretty quick though you can end up in a little bit of a sticky situation as nick found out so you do again always want to be paying attention <laughs> doesn't even know where he's going man this guy's nuts just riding it for fun ride the wave dog ride the wave in addition, there are some pretty cool like bonus sections on this mountain. Right at the top, it is, as I mentioned, pretty open. This is probably the main trail that I would say is similar to things on Poli. But you just never know exactly what you'll run into on the mountain. But pretty quickly here, you can see just how open the trail is. Again, quite a few more people than we're probably used to here in New Brunswick, but definitely not like jam-packed like you may see at some of the bigger mountains. Lots of space to take your time and work your way through. Nick felt a little bit courageous and so he wanted to try out the actual like terrain park, which kudos to him. I mean, I think he had a really good time rather than the one little speed check. He actually did really good just gives you kind of a different look in terms of some of the things you can do on the mountain. Once you get past that though, this was actually the first kind of blue section that we did and this is joining up that green section into the main section down. Um, this was quite a bit icy. This was one of the kind of trails that are used the most I would say and that made for a little bit of a rocky ride. We decided to finish the day with probably the most recommended and the best trail, Beaver. Beaver time. Time to catch the beaver, man. And this was the only trail on the left side of the mountain that was open. It does take a little bit of a second to actually get there, but the best way to describe this trail is in four different sections. So there's four steep sections. Between the first and the second is kind of a slower part, followed by three steep sections back to back to back. So with this being the first section down, I really do want to try and compare them to the other mountains that we've done, Poli and Crab. And I would say that this one is in the middle between those two. I do not think it's as difficult as Crab, but it is definitely a little bit more interesting than Poli. Unlike Poli, where you just kind of go straight down to the chalet, here you are still meandering through the woods, and the steep sections are mixed in with, with kind of some slower ones. You got some nice rock formations on the side as you kind of pitter patter through the kind of slower sections and then you do absolutely get to these places where the mountain drops away from you and you got to take a second to double check before you drop in. Once you do drop in though, it's a good ride. Here you can definitely kind of get a good sense of the gradient. This is still a blue trail. I definitely would say that there are black parts that are steeper. But this is still a good challenge, and I think it is a good progression for quite a few people who may be looking for something a little bit different than Poli, for example. This was also a really great opportunity for us. Here you can actually see me trying to keep my hips pointed downhill as I make my turns, rather than shifting them all the way into a break position. It was really, at the end of the day, this was the best trail we saw. The conditions were the best. There were the fewest amount of people, which is probably why the conditions were the best. And it was like a good combination of challenge and enjoyment. And you really did get to appreciate it before absolutely just hitting the bottom and getting back to the chair. And so that was us exploring Ski Wentworth. And I think that my final thoughts, it was a great mountain and it was a good progression. Lots of different levels for different people at different skill levels. If you can deal with the people, then I think you'll have a good time. I think it's the next level after Poli, Poli being the most acceptable or accepting of new skiers and Crab being a little bit more difficult. Definitely worth checking out. It's not that far and I think it was definitely worth it. And so with that, I will catch you on the slopes.